Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be working with the Flamingo Sleeve Bundle from Dimensional Drinks. The bundle includes the sleeve and the tumbler from Tipsy Magnolia that fits inside. That makes my life so much easier because there's no wiggle room and it's going to make for a very nice finish. I'm going to start by vinyl wrapping my tumbler today. This vinyl is called East Hamptons. It was from the Coastal Vibes vinyl pack at FlynnSistersSupplyShop.com. You can get this vinyl now as a single sheet option instead of having to buy the whole pack. And what I'm going to do on this vinyl wrap is I'm first going to just cut off any excess vinyl that I don't need, leaving about an inch of excess on both the top and bottom of the tumbler so I have a little bit of wiggle room. I'm also going to go along the natural design of the wave and I'm going to cut it with my scissors so I have kind of a wavy edge so that when my vinyl overlaps after we place it on the tumbler, the seam won't be straight down and it's going to create for a beautiful seamless look. After I got that edge cut, I'm going to peel back an inch of the paper backing on the opposite side and use that as an anchor to hold the vinyl against my cup. And then I'm going to grab my vinyl squeegee after I'm sure everything's lined up nicely and I'm going to use that with lots of pressure to press that vinyl nice and smooth against our cup using the vinyl squeegee to push back that paper backing rather than us pulling back the paper backing prematurely which is where we run into trouble with wrinkles and rushing too far ahead okay so just take your time on this once we get all the vinyl on there i'm going to go around and pop any bubbles with my razor just kind of pop a little slit there and push out all the air and then I'm going to trim the vinyl off the top and bottom rim and then run it through my edge trimmer so I get a nice crispy finish. Next we're going to base paint our flamingo pink with Color Shots Farmer's Daughter. So we're just going to spray paint the whole thing, wait till it dries and then I will spray paint the bottom as well and wait for that to dry. I'm also going to base paint the details of the face with just some acrylic markers. Most of the details are already kind of built into the sleeve itself. I did take a little bit of artistic liberty with that beak though, referencing a picture that I found online of just a cartoon flamingo. But I think this really set the sleeve off and I just, I don't know, it's like it came to life once I drew the face on. It was so cute. All right, once I've got it all base painted, I want to do a quick glitter coat on this just to give it some sparkle before I put it onto the tumbler. The reason I'm not going to do a quick glitter coat of epoxy all over the entire tumbler is because I don't want to get glitter on the vinyl. I want the glitter just to be a base layer of sparkle for when we go to apply our rhinestones to the flamingo only. Now that we've base painted our flamingo and the face, I'm going to apply the sparkly glitter epoxy coat. So I've got 30 milliliters of my Artist Care formula that I've already mixed and I've poured in some glitter. This is Bright from Peachy Olive Glitters and I'm using a paintbrush to really get into all those nooks and crannies. I'm gonna spread it on with my finger on some of the more wide open parts, but we wanna be very, very careful to make this a super thin coat we don't want any kind of pooling and putting it on with a paintbrush in some of those more cramped areas is really going to help with that. I did hit this with my torch really quick to pop some bubbles and I'm going to let this dry for about six to eight hours before moving on to the next step. Next we're going to apply the decal and I wanted to make sure that I didn't place the decal in a way that it would be overlapped by our flamingo. So just make sure you double check. The file that I used today is from Etsy and I will link it down below in the description box. It says party like a flock star and I thought that was so cute and perfect for this cup. I did create two offset layers on this. So there's like the bottom layer which is that cute pink iridescent then there's the white layer and then the very top layer which is the main part of the decal in pink it's a very detailed 
decal and the pattern vinyl that we use is very busy. So that's why I created two offsets to really help that decal stand out. This file had these teeny tiny dots on it, which of course I kept losing in my vinyl. So I just colored those in with a hot pink acrylic marker before. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever nobody's gonna know all right next we're going to apply the flamingo sleeve to our tumbler i'm using five minute epoxy today this is bob smith industries five minute epoxy adhesives i'm gonna mix about seven mill no 10 milliliters okay i probably won't use it all you got to work really quickly with this stuff and it smells really bad I think I mixed it for about two minutes or until I could feel it start to get soft and more clear. And then I spread it onto the tumbler in the section that the flamingo is going to go on. And then I twisted the tumbler onto the cup, kind of twisting back and forth so that that five minute epoxy wouldn't spurt up and spooge out the top of our sleeve. Okay. And I'm telling you, you have to work very fast. You have about 20 seconds or so once that epoxy is fully mixed to get it onto that tumbler and get that sleeve on before it dries. Okay. They also make a 30 minute epoxy too, which you could also use, but I, I just want to be quick with it and get this over with. And this is going to make for such a tight bond with the sleeve to our cup. Once that's fully dried, I am going to smooth out the bottom seal where the tumbler meets the sleeve. There's a tiny gap here and there's some ridges and I just want to smooth that out with some UV resin before I apply the vinyl circle to the bottom to make this bottom look a little more finished. So to start, I'm going to sand the bottom, including the sleeve, with some 220 grit sandpaper. Whatever grit that you have is fine. We just need to scuff this up a little. Then I'm going to clean it up with some rubbing alcohol and a paper towel. And then I'm going to run a bead of UV resin. I'm using resin rockers today. Along that well where the sleeve meets the tumbler. You're going to let that settle in a little bit and smooth it out with a gloved finger. And then I'm going to put that under my UV light to dry for a couple minutes until this is fully cured and hard. Now that's a little more smoother, I'm going to apply this three inch round of vinyl that I cut out of the same pattern that we applied to our tumbler earlier. I think I, I used a three inch hole punch for this just to make my life easier so I wouldn't have to fire up my Cricut, but however you want to do that. And I'm just going to apply that over the exposed stainless steel down there at the bottom to make it look a little more finished and kind of like this is a flamingo floaty floating through the ocean. All right, and here we are applying what is our first coat of epoxy to the entire tumbler. Again, using my paintbrush to really get into those nooks and crannies, trying to fill in some of that gap between the sleeve and the tumbler up there along the top where they meet, and just really being mindful of thin, thin, thin coats. Do not overcrowd this. Do not let it pool up. That's where we start to get bubbles and things start to get messy. So just very thin coats here. And really on this first and second coat of the tumbler, you don't even really have to cover most of that flamingo because we've already epoxied it when we did the quick glitter technique. I'm just touching up some spots here and there that might need a little bit of a smoother coat, if you will. Uh, but we don't want to add additional bulk to the flamingo more than what is necessary. Of course, we're also going to epoxy the bottom where we applied that vinyl and stuff earlier. While we're waiting on that to dry, I'm going to start blinging our domed lid. This is an additional accessory that you can order. I'm not sure if you can order it on the Dimensional Drinks website, but you can on tipsymagnolia.com. I will link that in the description box as well. And we're going to tape off all the areas of our lid that are not going to be pink and rhinestoned, which is this edge along the threads here, and then of course the inside and the threading. Once we've got those areas taped off, I'm going to scuff up the parts that we will be rhinestoning, which is some 220 grit sandpaper. 
after I'm done sanding, I'm just going to wipe this off with a damp paper towel, let it fully dry, and then we're ready to start base painting. I'm going to base paint this the same color that we painted our flamingo. That's that color shot, farmer's daughter. Just one quick light coat. You'll notice I have a little acrylic bead there on the top. That's to keep any paint from going inside the lid. This is going to dry, and now I'm ready to start rhinestoning. I got this cool lid holder from Kelbell Customs. I will link it in the description box. And we're using Aurora Light Rose Scatter Mix from Flynn Sisters Supply Shop for our rhinestones. And I've got Liquid Fusion inside my 18 gauge syringe needle, which I have found on Amazon. I will also link that in the description box. And I'm gonna run a thin bead of glue along the first edge there. Anytime that I'm doing scatter method with my rhinestones, I like to outline the piece first and then fill in the body second so that the edges of our piece are nice and straight and very clean looking. So one edge of all those rhinestones is lined up perfectly against the edge of that lid where it kind of juts out at the rim. Once I've got that first line on there perfectly, I'm also going to go around the outline of the straw hole along the top of our lid. I'm going to let both of our outline sections dry for, I don't know, about 15, 20 minutes, and then I'll move on to filling in the body of our piece, spreading small sections of glue at a time, about one inch by one inch square sections. And the goal here is to really balance your amount of glue. Uh, so you, if you don't have enough glue, the stones aren't going to stick. But if you have too much, that glue is going to bloom around the stone and make it look very messy. So I say this all the time in my rhinestone videos. I think this is the hardest lesson for me to learn in my rhinestone journey is really applying that glue neatly and not having too much, but also having enough to where I have a good bond. Here's what we ended up with. Look at how beautiful. I just love this rhinestone. Okay, and here I am putting what is my second and hopefully final coat of epoxy on this tumbler. For this coat, I am using my Artist Cure tumbler that's going to keep this thing bright and beautiful for many years to come because of all that UV protection in it. And I'm going to apply this just like we did the last one that you saw me do. This time the only difference is, is I did wipe it down with my tack cloth to make sure there was no lint or debris. Make sure it's nice and level on my turner. And I'm going to fully coat it in a nice coat of epoxy. At this point it shouldn't be more than about 30 milliliters to fully coat this cup. All right, now that my epoxy is nice and smooth and perfect, we can start rhinestoning. And I'm only applying rhinestones to the flamingo, so I'm going to very carefully scuff up the surface of the flamingo with my sandpaper, making sure not to scuff up the tumbler. If I'm unsure about this, if I'm not confident that I'm not going to sand where I'm not supposed to, you can, of course, just mask off the tumbler. Make sure, though, that your epoxy is fully dry before moving on to this step. So if you're using my Artist Cure formula, we'll want to have this drying for a full 24 hours. Now we're ready to start rhinestoning our flamingo. I wanted to start with the most detailed sections first. So I applied some of our liquid fusion adhesive to the beak here, making sure it was spread on nice and thin and evenly. And then using our black scatter rhinestone mix from Flynn Sister Supply Shop, I'm going to fill in the black section of our beak. I let that black section dry for about 20 to 30 minutes, and now I'm moving on to the white section of the beak. I applied the liquid fusion glue in the same way, just nice, thin, even application there, and we're filling it in with Transparent Crystal AB Scatter Mix, also from Flint Sisters Supply Shop, and I'm not working with any kind of pattern. I'm just kind of randomly placing the stones, almost like a Tetris or puzzle piece. 
all fitting in together. Making sure to fill in the gaps with all our tiny stones as often as possible. I have to wear magnifying glasses to do this because it's very hard to make sure I got good coverage in there. Uh, but I'm also grateful that we did put that sparkle coat of epoxy on our flamingo first. So if we did miss any spots, it's okay. Some of that beautiful glitter is going to shine through to create even more sparkle for our rhinestones. Once I finished the white section, I also did the little black eyes with some of the smaller stones from my mix here. And then I'm going to start on outlining the flamingo for our Aurora Light Rose sections. So I'm using Aurora Light Rose scatter mix from Flint Sisters Supply Shop and I start by outlining the bottom of the flamingo and placing a line of rhinestones all along the bottom placing the piece on my table to make sure they're nice and lined up and will sit nicely when the cup is lying flat on a table. I'll let that outline dry and then move on to filling in the body. Once I've got all the outline and the details filled in, I'm going to use Flint Sisters Fast Set Epoxy for filling in the body because I can fill in larger sections at a much faster pace than I can when I'm working in small sections with liquid fusion. To do this, I squirt just a little small dot of part A and part B onto a post-it note. Those little lids, forgive me guys, I've been wanting to find these lids for the shop for a really long time, but it's very hard to find the same black flip top lid in white. They're almost always different between the colors and I have to have one black lid and one white lid for you guys so we know the difference between part A and part B. Problem is I can't find the same styles between two different colors. I'm trying anyway. Mix the two dots of epoxy onto this post-it note until it's fully mixed. For me, this takes about one to two minutes. I don't really know that it's fully mixed, but I do know that I've been scraping that post-it note and mixing like crazy for a solid two minutes. It has to be mixed. This is a very small amount of resin, okay? I'm going to spread that epoxy right on to the large sections that we're going to be rhinestoning here, bringing it all the way up against the outlined stones that I applied earlier with the liquid fusion. Being careful not to get any of the epoxy onto the already placed stones. And just like the liquid fusion, it's very important to find that balance between too much epoxy on the surface and not enough. Not enough isn't going to bond the stone properly and probably dry quicker than the rest of the area and too much will bloom around the stone and make it look messy. So take your time with this and really make sure you get a nice smooth application. And while this is a fast curing epoxy, you do have a solid 45 minutes to work with. So I like to build up to larger sections at a time. For example, when I first started using my facet epoxy as adhesive for rhinestones, I would make very small sections at a time because I wasn't sure how much area I could cover before that epoxy dried. So that's why I say kind of work up to the size of sections that you are comfortable with. I repeated this section by section all the way around the cup, placing the stones again in that kind of random pattern that I had talked about with the lid. This is like a scatter method application. And once I've got the whole flamingo covered, we were done. This took me weeks, <laughs> but I absolutely love how it turned out. I let it sit for a couple days before I washed it really well with some Dawn dish soap and a scrub daddy, shined up those stones, and it's absolutely gorgeous. This is definitely one of my favorite cups I've ever made. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments, and if you liked my video, be sure to give us a big thumbs up, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I upload new videos every week. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again soon. And a big thank you to all of our Flynn Sisters exclusive members. Thank you for your pledge. Your support means the world to our channel. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.